Hi, and welcome to the channel. Tonight we're going to be talking about uh, one of the best pollinators you can possibly have on your farm. This is not just for beekeepers, but it's for anybody who wants some pollination. If you're gardening and you're looking for to pull the pollinators in all year, this is going to be one of the big ones. And this is mountain mint. Oh. So one of the reasons that we love the mountain mint up here on the farm, you can see the, the blooms. One of the reasons that we absolutely love the mountain mint on the farm is for this reason right here. We are at the 26th of June. Heat index is well over 100. We're getting scattered rain, but nothing major. We went about three weeks without rain with the temps in the mid 90s. You can see just how much that this is still blooming. This started off with just a few plants that I put in. And I know a lot of you all are gonna say, you know, that mint can get very invasive. Um, this really isn't bad. You can see I mowed this about a month and a half, about a month ago, and it's only, you know, about this high. So I'll come through and mow it, and I don't really have any trouble holding it back. This is gonna get about three feet high. This is as high as it gets. It's a great weed suppressant. One of the things that we love the most about this is how much it's going to attract your pollinators. So the, we have honeybees, as a lot of you all know, and on the farm, this is our major plant for when we are going through dearth. And so right now there's a lot of stuff not blooming, but we are seeing a ton of bees all over this. And what's nice is, you know, you can see here some bees in here. These are our honeybees and they are just constantly hitting up the blooms. There's one right behind it as well. And, and what's great about this is they hit this all day long. And again, we haven't had any rain, but the bees are able to survive. If you pan right over here, you can see we also have it around our barn. Ah. And there's an old myth that if you have mint around the barn, that mice and rats don't like mint. I don't know that that's true or not, but we have not seen any mice in our chicken feed or anything since we put the mountain mint out. That not having mice around means not having snakes around. So that's a benefit too. So a couple things to know about this. Um, it's going to last in a, in a really cold winter. This was put in about five years ago. I've been able to control it three feet tall. It is edible. And one of the things that we've noticed is in our orchard where we plant it in between our trees for weed suppression, when we put our sheep in there and they are able to graze the entire orchard, the oils of the mint actually help out with parasites. Now, I've not done any studies. I've talked to a couple of vets and they have talked about um, that it can help the oils. So whether it does or not, it's not hurting the sheep, it can only do good. So. They normally eat it down if we keep it in there long enough. It's not the first thing they're gonna hit. Goats may be a little bit different, but the sheep do eat it and seem to like it. The great thing about it too is, is you're gonna have the blooms that are gonna stay on top all year, um, even through the winter. So these right here are gonna stay on top. I'll just pull one off. Those are gonna stay on top and they're gonna be great. It's a really nice smell. You can take the buds like this and you can chew on them. It's a great thing. My daughter's done a little bit with some mint tea uh, and tried, but um, I think we find it to be a little bit woody tasting uh, when you do the tea. It's easy, I would say if there's anything that I don't like, and that is the fact that when you go to cut it, if you're using a weed eater, you can see how woody this is. So you can kind of see, I mean, I can bend it with my finger, but, but that is, uh, that's gonna be a little bit hard on a weed eater unless you've got some massive blade or something. That's probably about it. But if you're looking for something <coughs> to really use during dearth or something to just have out that's gonna bring in pollinators, this is easy to control. It'll be in part shade or full sun. It thrives in full sun. Once you get it established, it is about as easy as anything. I'm, I'm talking to you all in, in this video and I'm looking and seeing there's just some beautiful, here's a wasp right here, a beneficial wasp that is, uh, that's in there getting it. That caught my eye. So you can see that there are a lot of different pollinators. There's bees right behind there. I'll show you that again, but very easy to control. 
I would look at this even if you were in a food plot and you were having deer. We, it's deer resistant, but if you were really looking to plant something during the summer to suppress all the weeds, <coughs> got choked on that mint, and you really do want to just suppress the weeds and have something that you could come in and not spray, but cut really low in the fall and then plant over and do your oats and your wheat or anything, this would be really good because the pollinators are going to get used to this and it's also got a, a fairly shallow root, but it's something to have in the soil the entire summer. That's really all I wanted to show you. This is probably one of the best hidden treasures in the south, and you can plant it up north, but we see more of it. Um, if you have any questions or comments about this, let me know. Um, tell your beekeeper friends, if you're a beekeeper, keep in mind, it's a treasure. Have a good evening.